suppose it uh, started with people saying horrible things to each other on social media. Anonymous horrible things on social media. You got people in line in front of you talking on phones. Oh, it, it taking yeah. forever to check out because they're not paying attention, or people working places talking on phones, not taking care of customers. Or I know you don't do this, but mm. like you get a manicure, someone's talking loudly on the phone at the grocery mm-hmm. store. How about people who are uh, texting and the light goes green and they don't yep. move? Oh yeah, it's all minor compared to where we're headed. You know, uh, all during uh, COVID, you had uh, people screaming at strangers for wearing masks. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, you got people throwing stuff on stage at, uh, at at big name acts all the time. Oh, it doesn't matter whether they're and big name only, or not. Not only just throwing things on, but throwing them at the performers, like yeah. cell phones. And someone at a pink concert put her, threw her mom's ashes on the stage. So what the hell is going on with public behavior? I know. Doctor, or I should say Professor Kimberly Rios, um, we need a doctor. Yeah, we do. Uh, Department of Psychology at the University of Illinois. Um, the public's just stopped behaving like normal, decent, civilized human beings. And, uh, Professor, we need you to solve it. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the show. Wow. Thanks for coming on. Thank you for having me. Uh, I am not that kind of doctor, but I can try. <laughs> what 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 is it about this? Do we live in the most self? I always just say this is the most selfish generation I've ever seen, and I'm a part of it because I'm here. Or selfish time in the world. It's not that simple, is it? Oh, definitely not. Uh, I see a tendency for every generation to think that the subsequent generation is the worst, and uh, you know we tend to. Uh, as social beings, stereotype others as uh, in-group members and out-group members, and uh, generation uh, generational differences are definitely no exception to this. Uh, so uh, for sure it's not as simple as uh, boiling down to generational differences. Uh, my personal take, and there are a lot of different explanations for the bad behavior that's going on in public uh, as of late, but... Uh, some of my own research and my colleagues' research has shown, has shown that uh, during times of extreme uncertainty about uh, one's life and one's future, which COVID has for sure exacerbated, uh, people will tend to behave in extreme and sometimes deviant ways as a means of, uh, I guess, uh, providing just sort of overcompensating for the uncertainty and uh providing some sense of, uh, well, of, of certainty about what's going on in the world. So things that you can personally control, I mean, especially if they border on radicalism or extremism. Professor Rios, you know, I, I think we grew up in a, in a different time. I hate to have become that person where we'd say, you know, if you misspoke to someone or you were rude, you know, you'd get a, a spanking or a slap on the wrist or whatnot. <laughs> uh, so does it have to do a lot or in part at least with how we were raised I'm not so sure about that. I mean, I think uh, there are generational differences in uh, upbringings, what was normative and socially acceptable. Uh, But at the same time, I think these uh, generational differences tend to be overblown and stereotyped as more extreme than they really are. Uh, I think a lot of this is a product of uh, the environment and the uncertainty that's going on in the world right now. And, and we're not, oh, yeah, and yeah. you're not, and we're not excusing it. Um, mm-hmm. But I do have to say, and John, you and I've talked about this many times, our generation of parents in some way, I believe failed collectively our kids by fixing too many problems, not allowing them to deal with some of the tough stuff to work their way own. through it and solve it on their own. I know I'm guilty of it. Um, and I, I do believe that has had an impact on this discussion. It doesn't mean you create rude people. Um, that's a matter of character, I suppose. But John, you were going to say something, I think, along those lines. Well, I'm just curious because we are in an age where, you know, it's Twitter, it's Facebook. You can mm-hmm. say something without a consequence. You're not facing them face to face. The, so you, you're not as frightened to say and do, and then you, get in a public situation and you forget that it's not a tweet. Right. Like I'm in front of them now. Oops. You know, but you don't care. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the boundaries between what's online and what's not, what's private and what's public has been increasingly blurred uh, during this pandemic. 
So, uh, look, uh, in the 20s, post the first pandemic um, in America, was there a similar thing or were they too busy doing the Charleston? (laughs) Oh, that's uh, that's an interesting question. Uh, I wonder, too, if uh, part of people's tendencies to act up during COVID and criticize people either for wearing masks, for not wearing masks, for getting vaccinated, not getting vaccinated, even getting, quote, the wrong type of vaccine. Um, There's a lot of political polarization and ideological polarization that is wrapped up in the pandemic that perhaps we didn't see 100 years ago. Uh, So uh, I don't know. I Full disclosure, I was not alive 100 years ago. (laughs) Hard to say for sure. (laughs) With regard to public behavior, I guess, why why do you think or do you think we've become more bold? Uh, I think that uh, it's hard to say whether we've become more bold as individuals, but uh, there are situational factors, uh, which I always think of as a social psychologist, uh, that might bring out the boldness that uh, was latent before. Uh, so, for example, things like uncertainty in the world, increasing polarization between groups, whether that's political groups, generational groups. There are a lot of factors at play here. But I agree with you. We're seeing more deviant public behavior. And uh, there's uh, you know, there's a tendency for us to, um, uh, I-, I guess, forget that uh, we're not on social media uh, because so much of what is on social media now is uh, blurred with what's going on in real life. I mean, during COVID, uh, a bunch of in-person meetings and classes and and such were moved to Zoom. And uh, so now it's like, well, what's private and what's public? As uh, my uh, dear mom always says, treat anything that you post online as something that's forever public information. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you can't say True. it to their face, don't hit send. Right. Um, so we should call this out where we see it. I know uh, people are averse to confrontation. I'm not so much because I, uh, the one thing I abhor more than anything else maybe in this life is a bully. Mm. But bad behavior should be pointed out where it can be. Um, do you Do you back that up? Oh, uh, absolutely. And I think when we see bad behavior, there's a tendency to keep silent about it because we don't want to be the one person that gets backlash from those bullies. And uh, there might even be a diffusion of responsibility going on. We see something problematic and we think, well, somebody else will take care of it. It's not my responsibility. Uh, last word, Andrea. There you go. No, I just, I think, you know, I, I see this and I'm, I'm wondering you as a professor and you're teaching and, and shaping young minds, how you're telling your students, professor, um, how they should go about tackling something like this when they see it. Yeah, uh, I think, uh, the best, the best way is to actually, uh, is to take action and to not assume it's somebody else's responsibility. Uh, we all are responsible as humans for treating each other with kindness and with compassion. And if we see something, uh, uh, I teach about difficult topics like religion, uh, politics, discussions about diversity. And I always tell students that in order to create a uh, welcoming environment, uh, we should really pause and think, would a reasonable person uh, agree or uh, take objection to what I'm about to say? And I think the same applies to noticing and calling out bad behavior. Is this something a reasonable person would do? If not, then it is perhaps our responsibility to step in. Yeah, and, and those new WWJD bracelets, it's not what would Jesus do, it's what would a jackass do. Uh, may help in that case. Um, <laughs> yep. Uh, professor, I appreciate your time. Thanks for coming Thanks, on. Thanks, Professor. Thank you for having me.